Hi, welcome back to Educator. Today we're going to be talking about taking a melting point, which is a great way to analyze a solid. You might be using it to uh, identify an unknown solid. You might be using it to confirm uh, the purity of a, a solid that you've isolated and purified. And uh, melting point obviously is a, is a physical property of a solid compound. And the more pure the solid is, the sharper the melting point is going to be. And so that's why it makes a great tool to uh, not only tell us whether or not the compound matches the literature value, so that helps with the identification of a compound, but how pure your particular sample is by how narrow the range is of the melting point. So in order to prepare a melting point tube, um, <clears throat> we need to think about the different kind of tubes we have. Um, in this one jar, I have what, what are called capillary tubes. Capillary tubes are very narrow tubes that are open on both ends. And so we could use these to make TLC spotters or to draw, draw liquids up. Um, but these aren't melting point tubes. Melting point tubes are capillary tubes that are sealed on one end. So they look like itty bitty uh, test tubes where they're open on one end and sealed at the other. And what we want to do is we want to load the melting point tube so that our sample is, um, our solid sample is packed tightly at the bottom, at the closed end, um, at a height of one to three millimeters. So now if you don't know what one to three millimeters looks like, you should get a ruler and you should hold it up and you should, uh, and you should measure it. And once you know what a couple millimeters looks like, then from the, in the future you can, you can go off your judgment. But, uh, but go ahead and measure it first uh, to, to figure that out. And so what we need, uh, let's say on this watch glass I had my solid that I, maybe I had just done a recrystallization, I've just purified my compound. Um, or I've isolated a solid, or I have one that I need to analyze, I want to um, get some of that into my melting point tube. The first thing I have to do is I have to make sure that this is a powder. If it's not already a powder, a lot of times it's uh, they're, they're crystalline. Um, and we might have some nice crystals there. What we want to do is kind of grind that, that crystal up into a powder. So take a small portion of your sample, a representative portion, and grind it up until it's a fine powder because it's that fine powder we need to take the melting point. And then what we're going to do is we're going to scoop up just a little tiny bit of that powder into the top, the open end of the test tube, of, of the melting point tube. And then we could just tap it on the counter to um, get the solid to move from the open end all the way down to the closed end. Now, if you've jammed a lot of it up into the top and it's so packed up here, it's never going to move down. And so you should throw this out in the glass waste and just get a new one and try. So you want to scoop up just the tiniest bit, bit tap it down to the bottom, watch it move. And if you're tapping it directly um, on the end, it's quite strong and it can, it can withstand that tapping. we we'll watch it to the end and then take a look. If you're not at a couple millimeters, scoop up a little more, tap, 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 move it down until finally you have a sample size at the bottom that's between one and three millimeters and that's packed tightly. So we don't want air pockets in there because then that's going to not give us even heating as we heat our sample. So we want it nice and tightly packed um, until uh, and at the proper height. And again, if it's less than a millimeter, you can't really see the sample very well um, to, to make your analysis. If it's more than three millimeters, again, you're going to have a problem with uneven heating. And so you're not going to get an accurate uh, measurement there. So that's why it, it needs to be both tightly packed and somewhere around a couple, you know, just a couple millimeters. Now, what I have here is an example of a melting point apparatus, and um, it's got a couple things. It's got a, a heating block, so it's going to heat our sample. I slide this in. It's got a little slot to hold the melting point tube, so I, I put the closed end down with the sample in it, and um, it's got a heating block that the, that the sample is now resting next to. It's got a... Um, thermometer to tell me what temperature the, the unit is at. It, and when I hit the power switch, it also turns on a light so, and it has a little magnifying glass so I can look in this window and I can see my sample. It's going to be magnified so I can see these crystals very clearly. Uh, it also has a dial here to control how quickly I'm heating the sample. So this controls the rate of the temperature of heating. And uh, you only want to be rate, you don't want to be um, heating it too quickly because if you're heating it too quickly, you're going to have a heat lag between um, what the the melting point apparatus temperature is and what the crystals really are. If it's heating too fast, then you're going to have a lag and your crystals aren't really going to be as hot as the, as the thermometer is. So you need time as it rises slowly, it equilibrates as it rises, and you're, and you're going to get a much more accurate um, um, 
thing there. Another problem with it heating too quickly, not only the heat lag, but also you're going to, when you, when you observe the melting, you have to step up and, and read the temperature. And if by the time you look up here, the temperature's already changed, you, you again aren't able to record an accurate uh, temperature. So you want to heat it slowly. Um, if you know the range of your melting point, approximately where it's going to melt, you can maybe heat it a little faster to get close to it and then more slowly. So, or you can, and if you have no idea what your sample is, you can even do a quick melting point that's fast heating to get a ballpark range of where it's going to be. And then you can take a more, more careful approach um, with the second melting point to, to get a more accurate one. Okay, so, we, so anyway, this dial is going to tell you the reason there's a dial. Sometimes you do want to take a fast melting point, but most of the time you want it to be slower. Um, and so we're going to be watching our crystals, and there's two things we're going to be watching for. There's two temperatures we're going to be recording, so we're going to make sure we always have a pen in hand and our notebook here so we're ready to record the data as we're taking it. We don't take little scraps of paper, paper towel or something, and then transfer it later. This is your data. You need to record it live. So we're, I'm going to be watching as it's, as it's heating up. I'm going to be watching the crystals, and I, what I'm going to look for um, is the first sign of melting, and this is when your crystals start to look wet uh, for a significant amount of wetness. Now, you might notice that the crystals kind of shrink a little bit. Um, that's called sintering, and that, that is not melting, um, so we ignore that. But So it doesn't matter if they're sh you know, moving a little bit, but you want to see when it starts to look wet, that is melting, and so we're going to record that temperature. That's the first temperature of our melting point range. And then we're going to continue watching our crystals, and bit by bit you're going to see the rest of the bulk of the crystals are melting. And we and, and then finally you're going to see the very last crystal disappear. And now what you see in, in your uh, little mini test tube is just a liquid, a total 100% liquid, no crystals. That's your final temperature. So you take a quick look up at your thermometer and record that temperature. So that's going to be your melting point range, um, the point of first melting and the point of the last crystal disappearing. And that's what you're going to report in your laboratory notebook. And you always record a range. When we say take a melting point, we mean take a melting point range. So there always needs to be two numbers. Even if it appears to just melt instantaneously, you could write the same number twice. Uh, and so you have a, you know, a zero degree range or maybe a half a degree range. That's okay. And, and the indication of purity is um, a pure crystal is going, a pure solid is going to have a sharp melting point. So we expect that range to be just one or two degrees, hopefully. But uh, when we have impurities being, uh, being introduced, organic impurities, that breaks up the crystal structure, makes it a lot easier for it to melt, and so it will melt at a lower temperature than the literature value, typically. And it's also going to melt at a wider range. So that's going to be our evidence that we have not uh, as, as pure of a crystal. So melting point is a really great diagnostic tool, and it's uh, anytime you're isolating a solid product, it's most definitely one of the physical properties you want to record to characterize your product. So good luck with your melting points.